Okay, so today is another day on this track. So off camera since I last seen you all, I have gone through the track and just balanced out the levels. I haven't done any mixing from an EQ or plug-in color sort of perspective. I've just changed levels so it all sounds a bit nicer and balanced if you're listening on headphones or speakers or AirPods or whatever. I will play the track shortly. So last off, we were looking at the bass line. And the only thing I have done is I used that loop I found at the very start, which was this bass texture loop. Which sort of creates this call and response with a bass sort of glitch and texture. I've used it because I had the loop there and I thought it was cool, um, but it may get deleted or later on. And to prove my point about adding a bit of compression to the bass line and I have actually added our bass just to give it a bit of a lift. You can now hear how all these multiple bass samples and sounds are sounding more together, more tight, sounding more like one bass line just from using two plugins. So you can imagine after some saturation, maybe using a better compressor, um, EQing, balancing it out more with levels and so on and so forth, that this bass line is going to sound really good. And with the kick, what's going on here? Oh, I was mucking around with that. We can get rid of that. So all together. track should all sound a bit more balanced to you and nicer to the ear so today we are going to start adding some more synths so a quick and easy little technique what i do with synths is i listen to the track And I just start hearing certain sounds and um, ideas come through. And what I do is I write a list using um, channels. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go BGR, which is me, um, echoed bass synth. We're gonna get some acid in there because I usually always have acid in my tracks. I'm going to want some sort of pad. Whoops, what's going on? Pad. I'm going to want some Atmos sort of pad or sound that I can sort of bring in and out of the track. What else? Let's have a listen. If I refer back to the reference tracks at the very beginning, um, that Roscoe one had this really cool like, high-pitched whistle. We've also got this synth here, so we can sample that and make that our own. What else should we get and have a look at? Whistle. Maybe like a cool organ sound. That could be quite cool in this track. Yeah, and that will be us for the start, I think. Maybe we'll add some more as we go along. But now I've, at least I've got six sort of sounds or reference points to start looking for. So for this first one, which is this echoed bass synth that I want, I'm going to find my own, which is this one. I'm going to drop him on to the MIDI channel. Bring the fader across to one of the hits. The reason why I put it on a MIDI channel is now I have it on my keyboard rack because I can't remember the original key of this uh, bass hit. So now I can find my own key or my own note, shall I say. So 
that key sounded quite nice. So I'm just going to put in there for a minute. We're going to maybe see what one of the different notes sound like. So I think that one sounds a bit cleaner. So we're just going to do that. Let's move on to just finding an acid sound. So I'm going to go straight for the TB303 by Roland. And then what you want to do is you just want to make sure that the pattern on these ones are turned off. If it is on, it goes absolutely berserk like that. So just make sure it's turned off. And now we have. So I always use this in a lot of my tracks um, and just play sort of with the decay and the cut off and stuff like that. So when it's really short like this, you can get like this really cool stutter effect. So let's just add a note. So the shorter the length and the lower the velocity, the more sort of snappy the sound is. If you sort of duplicate this across, you can get this really nice effect. And then you can always have one stuff like that. So now we've got that. So that is that sound found. And you'll often just see is I'm not wasting the time at the minute trying to put it in the groove. Um, I am just finding the sounds that I like and then I will start playing around with it because it might be easier for me to lay down a pad or a chord or something like that first and then build these bass hits and acid hits around it. So for the pad, I am going to use the Archeria Analog Lab. So the Archeria Analog Lab is basically like a hub for all the Archeria plugins. So if I just go on the home section here, you can see you can easily get to different types of sounds, the different instruments, people who make the packs or presets, shall I say. You can like which ones you want. You can put them into different groups. There's stores you can buy stuff from. It's really, really, really in depth. Um, I think it's the best part and the most underrated part of the Archeria collection. Because what you can do as well is if I just load up this preset here. Not that I'm going to use that in this track, but what we can do is we can edit the preset just from different parameters down here. So these are just generic parameters that you can quickly change, um, but you can also open the instrument as long as it's updated to the latest version and you have the VST of which one we're using the Juno 6 all loaded up so now I can change any parameter in the synth that I want and you can just see if I quickly keep on scrolling from this bass section, how many different samples or presets there are. You can also then go by instruments if you have a favorite instrument. You can also then go by type, so the type of bass line you're looking for or the type of lead. Styles, genres, you can literally search anything in here. It's such a great feature. 
So we're going to go on to pad. And then we're going to go to style. And I'm not going to sort of go by genre, I think. I'm going to go and have a look at the styles. So we want something atmospheric. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to leave it on that for the minute maybe have a look at characteristics mm, no let's just leave it on that that's quite nice We might be able to do something with that again like we can just quickly maybe play around with some of these parameters so i'm going to bring that all the way down so that's our release so. this could work really nicely in the breakdown in fact if we refer back to that reference track let's just quickly have a look um, so it's got that pad or sort of chord progression there I think it even LFOs into the drop. Yeah, that's really cool. So I'm going to keep that one for the minute. And like I mentioned before about duplicating, duplicate it across. So we've got that preset saved. And now we can move on and see if there's anything else. So we need to go back to pad and go style, atmospheric, show. So that can be really cool as like maybe just like occasional synth hit. So let's open the plugin and we're going to try and remove some of that reverb and delay because I personally prefer adding my own reverb and delay so I can modulate it better. So now it's just a case of finding out where the hell is it in this plugin because I've never used this one. Okay, so the computer just crashed because I'm just having one of those days. Um, we're giving up with that sound. I can't figure out how to do it. So we're going to move on. Okay, I just found this, which I think is a really nice sound effect. So I'm not too sure on the beginning part of this sound. But I'm liking that sort of like echo effect it's having on the end. So we can always resample this. So again, duplicate, move on and see what else we can find. I don't know if I'm going to need any more sort of atmospheric sounds or anything, but let's have a look. Ooh. Quite like that. I'm always forward thinking, backwards planning. So I'm thinking style of track I'm going for. I want this sort of rolling, um, not big drop or anything, like literally one or two breakdowns, uh, atmospheric groover. So having these sort of sounds where if I just play it, 
bass comes out. See what I'm thinking? I'm forward thinking, backwards planning. This is why I like session view as well because I can just deactivate clips and stuff really quickly. So now moving forward, we've got one, two, three sort of pad atmosphery things. I'm probably not gonna need that one anymore so we can get rid of that. I am gonna have a look for one more because you can never have too much and like i've said before i like having too much and then going i nah, don't want that delete it later on so mm, soundscape let's have a look i think these are all probably all going to be quite intense yeah Sorry, I get carried away sometimes. Okay, so I'm not having much luck with anything else. Um, so I'm gonna move on to something else. Always just be conscious of like how much time you're spending looking through presets or samples to try and find the right sound. Um, Cause there never is the right sound. Just go, right, I've had a left, I've been looking long enough, move on, find something else. And then usually you will find something quite quickly. So we're gonna move on to something else. So delete that so we've got well, quite a bit already let's have a look through some samples for like a whistle That one's all right, so let's just drop him down on there. That's quite cool. So again, I'm just sketching the idea out and then I will place it in the groove probably when I start arranging. Um, it's just how I work with synths. It just seems to come more naturally with me because I like working in session view in like a two, four bar loop, maybe eight tops. And then when I start arranging, I start filling that loop out. And there you go. That is this episode of Track From Scratch series all over and done with. I hope you got some good insights into the different VSTs and synths I use to create my synths within all of my tracks. Like I said, the Analog Lab from Archeria is a must. You can rent it on Splice for about £15 a month. I will see you on Friday when we'll be going over to how to manipulate samples and take the full advantage of Ableton's Simpler. So I'll see you then.